This is Twit. Okay, so we've been talking about quantum computing recently. Even though the capability to break our current public key cryptographic security protocols remains purely theoretical, and I mean entirely theoretical, the existence of technology that could do so could render the asymmetric cryptography, which we depend upon to manage our symmetric keys, useless for that purpose. In practice, the security of anything and everything we currently protect with certificates and the public handshakes we make to negotiate secret keys would be open to circumvention and abuse. Astonishing to me as it is, although bombs are not flying through the air between hostile superpowers, there is clearly very active, continuous, and slowly escalating cyber warfare being conducted among and between the world's hostile superpowers. The only thing keeping this under control and at parity is that none of these superpowers has meaningful superiority in cyberspace. Or, don't, as Leo don't, don't would do it. never say... Don't do it. ...in cyber. Don't... I, <laughs> don't... <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in quantum computing's, if quantum computing's promise is realized, someone will have it first. And that someone will have a massive destabilizing power over the entire rest of the world. The degree to which we depend upon the stabilizing force of today's status quo should not be overstated. I don't think you can overstate it. And it's for this reason that researchers in cryptography, armed with an understanding of what a future working quantum computer might be able to do, they've already been at work, as we know, and we've talked about it recently, for several years on the design and implementation of next-generation so-called post-quantum replacement cryptography. The website Futurism runs a column called The Byte. And last Saturday's title was Oxford Physicist Unloads on Quantum Computing Industry Says It's Basically a Hype Bubble. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, it would be a full-time job to know everything about what's going on in quantum computing. And I suppose that's this guy's job. you know, And that's good because I'm already overbooked. Uh, at the same time, I don't know anything about what biases this guy might have. He certainly seems disgruntled. You know, maybe he applied for some grant and didn't get it. I don't know. But I, I found the synopsis of what he wrote to be interesting and worth sharing. <coughs> so this was in the Byte column on futurism. They wrote Oxford quantum physicist Nikita uh, Gurionov tore into the quantum computing industry this week, comparing the fanfare, they have in quotes because that was his word, around the tech to be a financial bubble in a searing commentary piece for the Financial Times. Now, Financial Times is behind a high paywall or I'd have gone to the source, but I tried and I couldn't get there. In other words, they said, in other words, he wrote, it's far more hype than substance. It's a scathing, but also perhaps insightful analysis of a burgeoning field that at the very least still has a lot to prove. Despite billions of dollars being poured into quantum computing, Gurionov argues the industry has yet to develop a single product that's actually capable of solving practical problems. And now he doesn't even mean crypto. Crypto turns out to be an extremely high bar because you can't have any fuzziness. And fuzziness seems to be a side effect of, of quantum, at least now. Anyway, he says, that means these firms are collecting orders of magnitude more in financing than they're able to earn in actual revenue. And he says, a growing bubble that could eventually burst. Goryanov wrote for the Financial Times, quote, 
the little revenue they generate mostly comes from consulting missions aimed at teaching other companies about, quote, how quantum computers will help their business, unquote, as opposed to genuinely harnessing any advantages that quantum computers have over classical computers. <clears throat> okay, now. For my part, while I think this is an interesting opinion from someone whom others apparently believe knows something about quantum physics, I'll just note as a counterpoint that something is impossible right up until the time it isn't. So, you know, and, and this doesn't guarantee that that something will ever not be impossible, but when the stakes are as high as they are, this sort of tax-deductible research is easy to justify to a company's board of directors. Anyway, Nikita Gurionov went on to say, Contemporary quantum computers are so error-prone that any information one tries to process with them will almost instantly degenerate into noise, which scientists have been trying to overcome for years. He also took aim at other assumptions about the field, arguing that fears over quantum computers being able to crack even the most secure cryptographic schemes are overblown. And notably, Goryanov's rant on the Financial Times comes just weeks after a group of researchers found that a conventional computer was able to rival Google's uh, Sycamore quantum computer undermine Google's claim in 2019 of having achieved quantum supremacy. Recalling uh, the sentiment, there's gold in them thar hills, despite the industry's lackluster results to date, investors are still funneling untold sums of in, into quantum computing ventures. You know, yeah, because what if? Um, Gurionov said, in essence... The quantum computing industry has yet to demonstrate any practical utility, despite the fanfare. He says, why then is so much money flowing in? Well, it's mainly due to the fanfare. The money, he argues, is coming from investors who typically don't have any understanding of quantum physics while taking senior positions in companies and focusing solely on generating fanfare. So, in short... Gurionov believes it's only a matter of time until the quantum bubble will pop and then the funding will dry up. So anyway, I wanted to share this presumably informed perspective since many tech media outlets covered this, uh, this rant in the Financial Times and uh, the Financial Times is, is well regarded because this Oxford University quantum physicist may know what he's talking about uh, because on some level it does appear to fit the evidence after all and because it serves as an interesting counterpoint to what does indeed, despite huge expenditures, still seem to be quite a long ways off if it is even ever practical. So will this quip, the, will, will this quantum crypto panic ultimately turn out to have been misplaced? Maybe. But the stakes are clearly so high that a great deal of wealth is being transferred. And in Leo, as I said at the, at the top, if factoring the number 33 is considered a huge achievement just recently, <laughs> and if, as Goryanov appears to believe, this particular branch of quantum physics is not about to be visited by a breakthrough, then the crypto industry probably has time to get its post-quantum crypto right the first time. And I think that's good. You know, even if quantum never happens, the replacement of our aging quantum unsafe crypto only makes sense. You know, why not do it? And since the replacement of everything we will have now will take significant time, I'm very glad we're already working to determine what that replacement will be. And it'll be interesting to see whether it is the replacement of 
pre-quantum crypto with post-quantum crypto that finally bursts the quantum hype bubble. Maybe if like no one is suddenly any longer has any cause to worry about achieving, you know, a, a crack in current crypto, then it's like, oh, well, okay, isn't weather forecasting already good enough? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it doesn't hurt to come up with better crypto no, uh, exactly. techniques. I'm and we using, know how long it's going to take. It's going to take forever. Yeah, I'm using ECC and, you know, some other, like I use that, uh, what is it, the 25519 now for my yep. SSH keys. Uh, yep. It doesn't hurt, right? Well, those are all crackable. Well, oh, right. That's right. <laughs> those are all, those are, I mean, anything public, a anything public key. Today. So elliptic curve is public right. key. Right. 25519 is public key. Right. Anything public key today. And so that's why I think we do need to like, yeah. and, and we know, we know how long it's going to take. It's going to take forever to replace what we have. Right. This is a common problem in general for people who cover technology fusions hard yes uh, cri you know quantum's hard like is the it, easy problems have been solved yeah uh <laughs> ai is hard self-driving vehicles are hard does it mean they're not going to happen not necessarily but maybe not uh i think it's good to be skeptical dvorak taught me that he thought everything was crap uh, it, but you know what? That's actually, if you're going to pick a default position, that's the most likely correct. Because most stuff uh, is crap. But then you're going to miss a few jewels. Like he thought the mouse was a terrible idea. And, you are and you know, no, everybody remembers that. Nobody remembers the 101 other things that he thought were crap that went away. So yeah. it's, it's something I deal with a lot. You know, uh, we're talking a lot now about augmented reality. And uh, I, I think I was right when I said 3D... In, in movies and TVs was a terrible idea and is was a gimmick. Uh, I'm not sure about. VR, I think, is a gimmick. AR, I'm not sure about. Quantum, you know, the real problem is, is as you point out, there's a gold rush because the governments are throwing money at scientists. So, of course, they're going to oh, say, you oh, yeah. know why they are, oh, too. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. oh, my God. If somebody does come up with it, I, w I would like, and I think they're starting to, but I would like to see them throw as much money at fusion, fusion could solve so many of our energy. It solve all of our energy issues yeah. today. Yeah, um, but it's hard. So is it never going to happen? I don't know. We don't know. It's an interesting conundrum for the tech journalist.